is Michelle C. with another episode of Candy Kids TV, everywhere you need to be. And I am here with the one and only. Go ahead and introduce yourself. How you doing? I'm Jesus Diaz. Uh, I'm a set customer for the IATSE 479, which uh, translates into film and television. Okay, so my first question is, what got you interested in the entertainment industry? Uh, what got me interested in the entertainment industry would be, uh, I was probably the age of seven or eight, um, or nine. Whenever you fact check it, you'll see when that year came out. But it was Bad Boys One. Oh, and I saw okay. uh, it was a strong scene between uh, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, and they were chasing a bad guy, and they were somehow they were split into two different chases with mm -hmm. the same goal in mind. But somehow they got bamboozled, and Martin Lawrence happened to be in the street floor, and the car was going to hit him. Uh, and then oh yeah, I remember that. Okay. That's the big yeah. scene when Will Smith was doing that mm -hmm. shirt open run. Mm -hmm. um, but it was such an epic scene and profound in itself that it made me, it moved me actually. Okay. And it made me uh, cultivate some kind of want to do and replicate the same thing. So after ever since that film, I've been very involved mentally as a kid, and now into my adult years in film. So what was your heart telling you at that moment? Was it that she wanted to be? an actor or just something in the scenes of entertainment? Um, as a kid, it was telling me I was Will Smith. Okay. <laughs> uh, as a kid, I, I wanted to be Will Smith. Uh, Not like Mike, just Will? Just Will Smith. Okay. I didn't know who, at, the, as a, at that age, I didn't really understand the character's full spectrum, mm -hmm. you know, because one was a playboy, one was a dad. But what I understood was that I was attracted to the energy that Will Smith projected on television. Because I also followed him on uh, on daytime television for the Fresh Prince, okay. So I just thought he was cool, and I thought he was me, but older. Gotcha. Um, and then when I got older, I started to shoot film as a kid, act in it, shoot it, but I never gave myself a title. It was just the act of filmmaking. Okay. Um, so my ambition would be to be an actor or a writer or a producer, which are TVA. Mm -hmm. um, but for the current situation, my craft is set customer. Okay. Well, join the club because I'm getting ready to do my improv classes, you know. So you might see me on the screens, too. Yeah, two classes. <laughs> oh, two. Two classes. <laughs> two, 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 two classes. Two. It's weird. Two. It's what weird. Is this? Uh, there you go. Okay. That's a church clap? What is <laughs> it's a It's a clap that my cousin uh, used to put me on to, but it was like that. He'll, okay. He'll say two claps, uh -huh. and we'll do this thing. But eventually, once we got it. It worked. <laughs> It had the same same effect as one clap, but two. Okay. So. All right. Next question: Who is your inspiration in the industry other than Will Smith? Um. Cause that's what got you start. But who who do you look up to right now? Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Mark Wahlberg um, was a under the radar role model that I didn't know I had. Mm. Been watching for so long and didn't know how he was involved in so many things that I watched that he wasn't involved. So what made you interested in Mark Wahlberg? Him, him and the Funky Bunch or <laughs> uh, or him as an entrepreneur, actor? Um, him as an entrepreneur. Okay. Um, I don't know what the Funky Bunch is. That's his group. Are you serious? Do not, you, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm not good with names. Okay, do you not know who Marky Mark is? I know, I hear Marky Mark all the time. That's his like... That's his alias because he used to be a rapper. He was Marky Mark in the Funky Bunch. The Funky... See, I never got the in the Funky Bunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was... Well, see, I'm a DJ as well. Oh, so, okay, like, okay. I know music history and all that. Yeah. You so, just, I just know... You got to know about the Funky Bunch. All I know is Marky Mark. Okay. Okay. And then you know that part. But at, that, at, at the age that I became hip to him because he was under the radar... Okay. I didn't research his musical career. I, mm -hmm. I researched his... Uh, his um, Wikipedia, and then okay. I started going into his film. Yeah. And he's produced, I mean, really, he's HBO's Golden Boy. Mm. I didn't know that. He has so many shows. I mean, How to Make in America is one of my favorite shows of all time. It's a story about um, a Dominican, a Jewish kid, a black kid, Kid Cudi, and they, how they come together okay. naturally, which is a natural thing in the North because there's so many. It's a melting pot of different cultures. But they're hustling for their dreams. So the whole show, it didn't get a third season, unfortunately, even though there's a petition for it to be out. Right. The show is about young hustle okay. and hustle into the artistry past adulthood and how you hold on to it and how you make risk and how you have to decide if you want to work or not and all these things. It's very beautiful, um, but it came out ahead of its time. And that's mm -hmm. what made me really get hit to him. And I'm like, wow, 
he promotes these ep- he produces these shows that are all um uh with the go in mind for each character very he's like my jay-z for film when you okay. hear jay-z rap he's talking about you got to do this you got to take these steps you got to be proud you have to be a hustler you have to know business speak mm-hmm. this language alongside your dreams mark Wahlberg, his flow is his production and film mm-hmm. so he's produced uh how to make an america the entourage mm-hmm. um boardwalk empire uh, i did not know that wow okay. empire. and uh his newest one uh ballers with the rock and okay. if you yeah. see the common theme in all of them even though one's gangster sports uh young people and actors in the film business they all involve a team of people working for a collective one mm-hmm. in the form of a hustle. And then I see his personal hustle. He has a, a, a family chain yeah, Wahlberg. that may be bigger than TGI Fridays in the next, because of his marketing in the next 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. Applebee's, you know, if you've seen that across the board, a lot of the restaurants have lost their value that we yes. grew up with. Yeah. And then you got these new things. Mark Wahlberg is in every, he signed a contract um, he only has 50 right now, but he signed a contract for 300 more. Mm. So in the next coming years, including this being the first year, he's going to have 300 Mark Wahlbergs around. You're going to see MWs, or I don't know the logo, I don't want to get it wrong, but you're going to see mm-hmm. this green W that's going to be everywhere like a McDonald's sign. Yeah. And I, I, I aspire to do that in my personal life. So Mark Wahlberg is one of my biggest if not one of the only inspirations I have currently right now. Shoot, he might be mine now, too. <laughs> Mark Walker, Marky Mark. Okay, well, this is Motivation Monday. So what keeps you motivated in this industry? Um, another role model. But his, uh, I learned it from a tough person, but they work just as hard as you. Okay. Um, Tyler Perry. Um, Tyler Perry is somebody that people, a lot of things are attached to his name. Mm-hmm. That is not something that he fabricated. It's something that the world fabricates. But in working with him uh, in this industry, my passion lies within the higher tier positions: producer, writer, film right. director, DP, actor. But in the I won't say lower positions, but in the more behind the scenes positions, there's a lot of work ethic that has to be there in order for you to enjoy your job. Because your job is very enjoyable, but there's a lot of work. Yeah. So, you know, 14 hours behind anything, even if you say I'm dribbling a ball for 14 hours, mm-hmm. it ain't going to be fun after the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. After that, it becomes work. I, I remember acting when I was younger and did like a, it was some kind of, I don't even know what the commercial was. But all I remember, I had to keep throwing this ball back and forth, back and forth. By the third take, I was like, I quit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like, but I mean, you know, that's me being a child. You know, children, our attention span is not that long or whatever. But I'm just like, As yeah, an adult, for me. my attention span is still... <laughs> The only thing that holds my attention is either a really, really pretty girl, some really good smelly food, mm-hmm. and money. No, <laughs> what smelly food? Yeah, smelly food. I think smelly is bad. Some, some, some savory food. There okay, yeah, that's better. I'm like, I don't know if I want it if it smells that bad. Uh, Tyler Perry's uh, work ethic, I seen firsthand. I seen this guy's work ethic firsthand, and. I don't think he's on any kind of coffee. I don't think he's on any type of pill. I don't think he's on any kind of uh, uh, of uh, management by other people pushing him to do. He's not forced. Mm-hmm. This guy gets up at six in the morning, probably earlier with us, and then he rocks it all the way until three in the morning with us. Mm. Back on it on Tuesday. That's Monday. Then Wednesday. Then Thursday. Then Friday. Then back on it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Back on it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then you find out on the weekend he traveled somewhere and, and you see him on television and he's handling press and he's handling. Mm-hmm. So when you see that kind of energy in front of you from a human being's body, right, it makes you look at yourself and it motivates you to aspire to do better. Because then what's, what's your excuse? Yeah, so that's we all what get the I same 24 to. hours. So this guy gets 24 hours and he goes from living in his car and I had a real intimate conversation with him about him about that particular situation because I mm-hmm. had a little depression when I was walking around work. It's the reason why I got one of the faves on my neck. What's um, the faves? I have three faves on my neck. So one is for uh, my internal conflict, one's for my fear of death, and another one is for people, my interaction with people that you got to have 
faith that you're going to be surrounded by good people and that there's good in other people and that there's happiness in other people. Okay. So you can pull it out because they, they, you know, they're not showcasing it. Mm. That's what we're supposed to be each other's keepers and we're supposed to be fishing for happiness and not, you know. Right. But TP, uh, he told me that he wrote everything down. He wrote his plans. He prayed heavily. He prayed. And then he told me this one of my favorite parts. He was like, you fear, but fear was not born into the soul. You know that, right? Hmm. And I looked at him, and then, you know, as a young guy, you go like, yeah. Right. But he didn't like the, yeah. Right. So he looked at me and said it again. Fear was not born into the soul. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. And um, since then, I've always had this check with fear where I'm like, you ain't, you ain't part of me. I don't know how you got here. Right. But I know you don't belong here. And just having that type of mind frame has given me uh, a little bit of that hustle that he seems to tap into all the time. Mm-hmm. So I don't fear now getting too tired or because sometimes fear doesn't come at you in fright. Sometimes it comes in you and complaining. Oh yeah. And of the outcome of things like oh you know I'm going to be work all day and I can't go home and watch TV. <laughs> yeah, I'm known to do that a couple of times yeah, a day. So right. <laughs> that that's my motivator. Mm-hmm. Just being surrounded by people like TP and Oprah and. And, and I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Oprah, but I've been around people that are charged up by her effect. Actually, I met mm. Oprah once, but it was, a you know, we're on set. Just say, hey, hey and she says, it. hey. Yeah. And then she got focused on her lines. Right. Um, but she did shake my hand and look in my eyes, and I value that moment, too. Mm-hmm. So being surrounded, my motivation comes from being surrounded and trying to seek people that are very motivational and in the path of what I want to do. Uh, I find that like attracts like, and if you're trying to be like someone, then you got to seek it. That's right. So that keeps you motivated and, and keeping positive entities around you. One thing that I remember from Tyler Perry that was genius to me is when he came out with House of Pain, instead of him trying to find someone to pick it up, he was just like, no, I'm just going to fund it, and you're going to watch it, period. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if that wasn't a boss move. Yeah, I still, have, <laughs> I still haven't cracked the code on his boss moving. Mm-hmm. I know where his energy comes from. He's, he's self, there's something in him that I don't know what it is, but I know a little bit of his belief system, but I know that it's genuine and I know that he works hard towards certain things. I don't know where his motivation comes from, mm. but it is a pretty uh, 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 admirable trait that he has mm-hmm. because not everybody has it. And I would like to believe that everybody has the potential for it. Right. But he's tapped into it, and he has a certain belief that, that he can achieve what he wants to do. And he can't say no, and, and he has the power of no in mm-hmm. his hand, and he has the power of yes in his hand, which is beautiful. So he's able to say no about things and yes, and then it manifests itself. And it turns out to be in his favor, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, that's a, that's a, that boss move thing is, 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 um, I'm feeling that it, it, it comes from a a sense of being grounded and knowing who you are mm-hmm. and then not being able to be pushed on it. Yeah. You know, being able to grow from, because you have to hear no's as well, but not being able to let it push you back in any way or form. Right. You just take it and you transmute it into something positive, whether it's a lesson or love or forgiveness, but you, you take those hardships and there's no's and those roadblocks and then you deliver them back in some kind of good energy. That's right. That's right. Well, next question is, what are some words of wisdom that you would give somebody that's trying to get into the entertainment industry and the longevity of the industry? What's going to keep them there and what's going to make them stay there? Mm. 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 That's me tasting some of the thoughts that, that just hit me. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to give you something that's sweet. Um... One, well, there's two aspects to the industry. There's networking, Mm -hmm. and then there's you. And the reason why I say that is because I separate the two, because you takes place in networking. You You have to network. But the network does not define you, but it can in this industry. Um, You have to be genuine Mm -hmm. to who you are, to your thoughts, your outcome and what you're putting out and when you meet people because you're meeting a lot of people you're meeting uh, a plethora of people white black asian 
alien, and some of these people will be alien because they're, okay. <laughs> they're from Cali and they got this. Wait, but I'm from Cali. What you nah, trying to nah, say? You know what kind of Cali <laughs> person I'm talking about? The what? ones that have this magical artistic freedom because you don't okay. find that in Atlanta you don't find it in New York but Cali has this, like too much sunshine thing why do you feel people, like you don't find it in Atlanta or New York you do but not in the amount that that you it's like it's like catching a, a, a parrot in the forest okay you know you have to be where it's at to see a parrot but most of the time you just see trees mm. but those animals those magical people I guess alien is is, is, is a low low word uh, unicorns. You see these unicorn people out here who are just magical, mm -hmm. and you can't penetrate them. They penetrate you. That's their job. Mm, okay. they're, they're unicorns, so they're right. spreading magic and leaving rainbow and pixie dust all over you. But you have to remember to be genuine, because a lot of people go into the industry, and I've done this when I first got in. I didn't know what to expect. Okay. But I've always based it off what I heard. So you mm -hmm. have heard like you have to know people, you have to watch out, and. You know, everything is a sexual favor and everything yeah. is someone trying to, you know, but it's really not that. You got to um, make your own reality. Yeah, you got to make your own reality. But also don't go into something that you don't understand and it's smoke covering it. And mm -hmm. then you, you stick your hand into the smoke, but not being your genuine self. So you might throw a punch into the smoke and you might hit someone that was unassuming and didn't expect it. Mm -hmm. Or you might reach for something and grab something that you didn't expect. And you have to just stick around and let the smoke clear. But in the process of networking with these people that you don't know, from every aspect of the film business, from the janitor all the way to the editing, to that actor, to the director, to the PA, to the, the assistant, to the person that grabs your coffee, to you grabbing someone else's coffee, the whole journey from, from me, from PA, all the way up to set customer, and hopefully further, if we do a part two of this, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, but. You have to be very genuine in who you are because you will burn yourself out being okay. fake. Yeah. And you don't want to be fake because someone will catch you. And the first person that usually catches you and it never fails is yourself. Because mm -hmm. you'll be exhausted and you'll put in yourself in situations and expending energy that doesn't help you. And uh, how I said earlier, you take in energy and then you turn it into something else. Mm -hmm. If your energy is already fake, you ain't gonna receive none of the energy that you should be receiving because you're not genuine and no one right. can, everyone's just giving you energy that they think you deserve because you're a certain way. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people want something from people in this industry, so when you're genuine, the only way to be genuine is just to be true. So if right. you do want something, then say it, speak it, but don't have alternative, uh, alternative mo ulterior motives, um, don't have agendas, don't have uh, a me, 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 because film has so many dynamics, you have to apply that formula even to your friendships in the industry. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand, how can I work as a team? So if you have a designer, how can you be a PA or a customer or a shopper or a um, assistant or a tailor? Those are people that help a designer, but yes. together they fall under costumes. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about the film, how do you guys fall together? And when you start realizing your dynamic and your role and how you can be of service to the people around you, which of service should be a people to everyone around you, but mm -hmm. at this industry, you start to realize that people start seeing the gifts inside of you and they want to utilize it to help them further their cause or whatever. Right. And now you've mastered that network. And then by gen being genuine to yourself, you get to handle network that you can live on and it doesn't take a toll on you because you're being fake or you're over compromising or you're over obligating so that means you get to be you right so that's why I say the network in you so my advice is is uh, and what the question was some words of words of wisdom yeah so my words of wisdom would be in the film it's all about you discovering yourself and all about you discovering yourself in film involves the river in that you're the boat is the network that you're in and you find yourself in. And in order to keep both of those things balanced, you have to be genuine to yourself. Okay. So don't become the industry, be a part of the industry. All right. Now on Candy Kisses, we try to keep it fun, so we always ended it with something mm. really, really quick and cute. <laughs> so we have a um, segment called Kiss or Diss. Oh man, let's go. You know what? <laughs> 
So, I don't think I'll die though. I think I might get some life. No, 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 no. So what's happening is you're going to I'm going to throw out some celebrity crushes. And you're going to say whether you're going to kiss or diss. Oh, I'm with that. I'm fine with that. Now you can't can choose both. It has to be one or the other. Mm-hmm. All right. Kiss or diss. So Aaliyah or Monica, who you kissing? Who you dissing? I will kiss Aaliyah because her music made her an angel and she lived a short life. So okay. I would like to, I would just like to kiss her. I'm okay. Leave it at that. Okay. And Monica, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to diss you. <laughs> All right, next one. Megan Good or Carrie Hilson? Hmm. Hmm. Excuse me, that's my thoughts. You know what? <laughs> become more uh mm -hmm. <laughs> more suitable for, focus, focus. for tv um making good mm -hmm. the new version of you is married and okay. i'd be unfair for me to even want to kiss you so i'm gonna have to diss you okay but you said carrie hilson mm -hmm. yeah i've seen carrie hilson at church mm -hmm. uh hopefully she doesn't see this because then she may not go to the same church anymore but carrie hilson oh you trying to pull up on carrie <laughs> oh man i've sat next to carrie and i'll just be like you know kiss, 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 kiss. <laughs> I'll kiss Carrie. Okay, yeah. and last one, Jill Scott or Whoopi Goldberg? Oh man, now you know Whoopi has those. Uh, I keep forgetting the the word for it, but she's won every award possible. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's though. so rare that people. Yeah. It's like it doesn't sit. You don't hear about it enough. Right. But for those achievements. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Gonna have to this year, cause Jill Scott. Ah, I gotta yeah, kiss her. You want that Jill Scott and chill? That's what you <laughs> Gotta kiss Jill. Mm-hmm. Jill got some flavor on her. Oh, okay. Lease. Is that what you're yes. calling it these days? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, this has been another episode of Candy Kisses TV Motivation Monday. Tell them where they can find you on all social media. Again, my name is Jesus Diaz. You can find me on any set in Atlanta. Just pull up on me. Don't get in trouble. Cause you know, you can't just pull up on me on certain sets. But if you see me around or if you want to get in touch with me, you can go on Books with Whiskey. Books, B O O K S, with the regular with whiskey, but not the Scotch whiskey, the American whiskey. So there's an H in there. Uh, and that's on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And that's been another episode. See you soon. Candy Kisses TV is sponsored by Kissable Lips Cosmetics. Subscribe to Candy Kisses TV on YouTube now.